Case number 2402208, Hidden Valley Apartments versus Dwayne Carey. And good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. And tell us your name. Uh, Dwayne Carey. And Mr. Carey, you are here today for a landlord attended hearing for non payment of rent. And it appears that you have entered into a consent judgment to settle this matter with the landlord. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. But I still have a few questions if you don't, if you might. Okay, would you like me to go over the terms first and then you can ask me the question? Sure, go ahead. Okay, all right. So what you're agreeing to is to waive your rights that you saw in that video. Remember you saw the video? That's the part I have a question about. Go ahead. Yes, okay. Ma'am. All right. And there's certain rights that you would have in that video that you will be waiving by entering a judgment against you. All right. So what you're agreeing to, if you want to enter this judgment, is to pay rent $3,282.53. That's not the judgment. I'm only supposed to pay 940. This is a pest issue, a pest issue. Okay. You do not have the video. That's fine. I, this is what they told me that you had this agreement and that you were going to pay 949 on April 30th. There's some terms, but the full the full judgment is three thousand four hundred fifty six dollars and fifty three cents. So with that question, so um, they said that uh, I would pay April's rent. And then I would be able to either move out or pay the. I have never got through the rest of what you agreed to. So that probably is the terms, but I don't know because I haven't finished reading. So you want me to read it to you and tell you that, that that's correct? I can. It's up to you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, because what you're agreeing to is $3,282.53 plus court costs of one seventy four for a total rent due $3,456.53. If you pay that amount, you get to maintain possession of the premises. They have given you terms that say you will pay April rent $949 by April 30th. And the balance of this amount that I just put on the record by April 15th, May 15th, excuse me. Or alternatively, they have stated that you can move out and turn in your keys on the 15th of May. If the April rent payment is made on or before April 30th, then the plaintiff will inspect the premises and apparently repair bed bug issues. So what was your question about those terms? Well, my question about those terms is, will I still be liable uh, to the management company for the remaining balance outside of that 949 that I would pay for April. Yes. I've been injured. Yes, apparently so, because they did not say that they're waiving the right to see what this does. This is just a possession only judgment, which means that they don't have a money judgment against you by entering into this. It's just possession of the premises. Right. And we just determined the numbers for you to stay there. If you choose not to pay, you don't have to, you can move, but they still have a right to, once you move, go in, assess the place, see if there's any damages, see if there's any still any unpaid rent, then they would have to file a different case okay. to sue you for the damages and the unpaid rent. So yes, you could still be on the hook for right. unpaid rent. That was my question. Um, so uh, you said, so there is a three day period after today that I would have to uh, uh, file a motion, correct? Yes, you could to, just write us and say, I'd like to set aside uh, a consent judgment, okay. some rights that I'm giving up that I don't understand, or something about the judgment that you don't understand. Okay. That's why I try to ask people now. So you don't go home and say, oh, you can't just change your mind. You have to not understand okay. something. Uh, also, and uh, I, I I know the court can't give out any uh, uh, legal advice. Well, that's why we have the right to give you that adjournment that you're waiving. Okay. Where you could go see lecture legal aid. Okay. To talk about those, because they're the attorneys that 
may help you. I mean, they don't take every case. I, I called and they didn't. They said I made too much money. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so that's why I was. I, I originally wanted to come here and get an adjour- adjournment to seek counsel. Legal you can counsel. still do that if you want. I can still do that. Yeah, okay. you don't have to enter. This is a. That's why we call it consent. You agree to it. You don't have to enter to because the judgment. You can adjourn it to seek counsel. That's one of the rights that I read to you on that video. That you do have a right to have a lawyer. If you can't afford one, that's when we will refer your legal aid, or you could ask for the adjournment to go hire your own. Let's go ahead with the default judgment today. No, it's not a default. I mean, the, you, you can't. The, the, the judgment. Consent judgment. Consent judgment. Consent judgment. Today. Now, you're sure. Yes, you're right. Okay. All right. So, that those are the terms. And, of course, you do have three days from after today to ask me to set aside the consent judgment. There's something about the rights that you're giving up that you do not understand. All right. But you do understand that you got to be paid by April the 30th, the 949. And then by May 15th, the balance of that money. So if you don't pay it, you can turn in the keys by the 15th of the month. If you have paid that April payment uh, by the 30th. Okay. All right. You're and they're going to check it on the bed. I just want to state something for the record. Sure. Uh, I've been going through this bed bug issue with Hidden Valley Apartments. Since last October, I've done my due diligence as according to my lease. Um, I've been waking up in bed. Okay. Stop. Let me, let me tell you something. Again, you do not have to enter into a situation. You can have a trial on the bed bug issue. They have to prove that the premises are happening. Okay? That's one of the what we call statutory covenants. There's laws that say the landlord agrees that they keep the premises in a habitable condition. Now, not every bug infestation is enough to say it's not habitable, but some are. And if you're living in those type of conditions, you could have a trial, you could present your defense and evidence and anything else that you have to show what type of infestation it is, then the court would have to make a decision. The court would have to decide what type of rent abatement if any, that you're entitled to, or if there's been a total constructive eviction uh, based upon the circumstances. So you could have a trial if you feel that strongly about it. You don't have to enter into a consent judgment. That's on you if you choose to do it. Because I, I hear you really want to voice you know, your concerns about it. And the only thing I can do I can't do anything, yeah. actually, unless there's a trial. But the only thing I can do is suggest that, you know, you stay on them to uphold what they said, that they're going to treat the bed bug issue. I don't know how they, they do they, it. They I don't know if they're going to call an exterminator. They've done that before. They've been, they're been treating to... this for the past six months of no avail. Uh, the lady below me has a, an infestation. This has come up to my apartment. Um, to, this is not my fault. Um, it has broken a piece of my home. It has, and I have woke, wake up with big bugs on me. I wasn't oh, ready. It's like, I don't live like that. No. I apologize to the court for getting emotional. No, I don't I mean, I'm a diagnosis technician. I have to work at 4 o'clock in the morning. And there are nights that I can't sleep because to take care of my patients. Because I have, I'm worried about getting bit. I've been bitten all over my body. And this is just, it has just ruined my life. I can't have family, my, my nieces, my family, my friends over for Easter. I can't have anybody over my house. I can't go over any of my friends' houses to socialize. I can't do anything. This has ruined You're afraid my of carrying life. Bugs yes. Yeah. Well, let me say this. You know, you might oh, just, sorry, girl. you know, I know, I understand it. I, I get it. It's an emotional thing. People don't understand something that they think is so minor can be very major and it can disrupt the whole I lifestyle. Just, so, why don't you do this? Why don't you go ahead and agree to the terms, if you want to, to move out? Okay. Because why would you want to stay? I don't, I don't want to stay there, you are. If they, they, cannot, not, I mean, if they tried them. and they can't. Fix it. I just don't want to be on the people that for them coming after me for no three thousand dollars or two thousand dollars when when they breach the lease. And I and now I, got, I, can't, I can't take I can't take my furniture with me. I have to throw my bed out. I got to throw my couch out. I can only take my. I have a three thousand dollar couch that's three years old and I bought from Gardner right? and I worked hard for that. I worked hard for my bedroom set. I worked hard for my and I got to throw it out because I can't. If, if I do move, I can't take that with me. 
Have you thought about getting this termination? Well, they, 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 see they, if they can do something to your friend. You know, because and, see, these all things can be settled if they choose to sue you. Or conversely, I guess you could sue them uh, for, for those type of issues if you wanted to. You'd have to seek counsel for all of that. Okay. So. But I'm just saying, if they choose to sue you for unpaid rent or damages, so that's when you would bring these issues up okay. and try to say, I don't owe you anything. You could counter sue. Right. You could do that. Okay. But, you know, that, that remains to be seen. And you need to get a lawyer to determine, you know, exactly how you want to proceed. Okay. Thing. Okay. Thank you. Okay. But you do understand the terms that you're agreeing to yes, now. Yes. You pay the 949, and then you could move and turn in your keys by the 15th. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Is there anything else that you have a question on? No, you've been very helpful. Thank you, Dr. Black. Thank this court. Well, Thank you so much. To you. Absolutely. And once we get this uh, actual uh, judgment, I'll sign it and then it'll come back to you. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. All set. Good luck. Okay. So this is case number 2402187LT in Valley Apartments versus Jenny Thomas and Occupants. Come on up, man. Wrong side for you. Oh, she's on the side. And come a little bit closer to the uh, microphones here. Tell us what your name is. Is that name Thomas? Okay, it's Thomas. And good morning. Good morning. And you're here today for a landlord tenant hearing. This is for a non payment of rent. Now, what I've got on the form is that. Um, you were advised of your rights. You watched the video today, yeah. correct? So you understand all the rights that you typically have in this kind of case? Yes. Yeah. All right. And so the landlords, by his notes, has indicated that they believe you owe rent of $2,516.95, $174 in court costs for a total of $2,690.95. They're asking me to adjourn this hearing without doing anything because they want to investigate some of the issues um, that you claim that you made a payment in December that was some removed, I guess shows that it was taken out of your bank account, mm -hmm. but it shows insufficient funds on their end. Right. So they want to clear that up. And um, so because they showed it that it was reversed out. And like I said to him, um, it came from two different accounts. The account that I had on file that I was using, it was on auto pay, and I never knew that. When you download the rental app, um, it automatically puts your payments on other pay, which I thought was weird. So when I found out, I took it off. But I made a previous payment before the payment that was due for December, November spring. I made that on the account that I used for December spring, and it went through. And um, so that's the that's the one that they don't see yet, or they don't. It's on there. It shows we went through. First, it was information that we had to go through. I'm putting out statements, and I also brought paperwork and documents of all the payments that have been made and showing that the payment came out of the account. Okay. From bank statements to um, the rental app um, receipt and also some other things. So you don't think that you owe this total for up to today through April? That's correct. Right. Also, we also figured out that I told him. Um, him being the lawyer. The lawyer, I'm sorry. I told the lawyer that I made payments with a money order for February, March, and April. Now, I paid April's rent on the second that he said NSF is coming from like from after January. So February, March, and April are showing, or February and March are showing NSF. But that's been paid through money order. The apartment has copies of the money uh, order. They processed it in front of me. This is, let me just say this, separately and aside from all of the issues in this case. I just don't like money orders. I'm going to tell you why. I don't like electronics. Yeah, I know. You know, the money orders are bad from the standpoint of, I mean, they're good because, I mean, you pay your money, you get the money orders, but if, if somebody loses it, like, just say they lost it. But I have a copy that is not on me at the moment. But if you have a copy, but they can't find it, then you got to go through the whole trace system and it takes like months for them to right. do that to see if I it couldn't make a payment what online. happened or for them to even cancel it. Right. I, and I couldn't make a payment online because the rental app that we use called rent payment, it won't let you make this the month that you owe. It will make you pay the full balance sure, that you sure. owe. So but I let me ask you this, that just for future reference, can you do something like a bank check? I usually pay with my bank account. 
But like I said, I couldn't do that. Or my bank I do is not like uh, you can walk in bank. Okay. I have an online bank, so I can't. But do some that. of the walk in banks, you can just pay a couple of bucks. Yeah, and, and get, get a, 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 a bank check. A cap, just give them the cash, and they charge right. you ten dollars, and you get an actual check. Because then you could trace it, and that's correct. easily. If you if they lost it, money orders are just harder. But that's just me he told me that's what I could use to pay the, the property manager. I'm sorry, he told me that's what I could use to pay the rent because I couldn't make the payment online. Sure, you could. So that's what I use. But if anything goes order. wrong, it's hard to trace them. That's all I'm saying. February when it was posted with the money order. I have proof of that. They put that on the portal. They did not put March on the portal. They did not put April on the portal. So that's what even I'm though you paid them. Yeah, so ma'am. And you pay those with money. Yes, ma'am. Well, Mr. Borkin, I guess you're going to have to look into that. I don't know why that would be occurring. And if they lost the money on his oh boy. <laughs> That's a long process for her to get it traced or canceled and reissued. Mm. So how much time do you want for this adjournment to look in on it? Uh, Your Honor, I think a week or two is sufficient. I do have a couple questions for my client as far as how if the defendant says that they paid by money orders that they would not have received a credit. It doesn't seem like there's anything else that they could do. So I, I want to try to figure out. If yeah, because she said she got credit before when she paid like in December or something February. Post, February posted. I don't know what happened to March and April. And I did, I just recently looked like, why is March not on here? I work and I, my hours I work are crazy. So my brain doesn't function how it should be. Yes, I'm young, but it doesn't function how it should be. I got a lot going on at I work. <laughs> so my I mean, wait, 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 why is March not on here? March is not on here. Now, do you have the receipts for the money on them? I do. I just have them, the one Maybe I Maybe you can have, give Mr. Borkin. No. We, I, we, I did show him the receipts oh, I have now. However, you didn't have the ones that you need. The ones that I didn't need, they are at home. I thought I had so you my, said you have his phone number where you could like I do. email him yes. to him or something? Yes, ma'am. Because that way he could actually have the men say to his client, hey, it's money order number such and such, it's dated so and so. She claims she gave it to you on such and such date. Right. At least I I, I I pay my number early. I had to get it out of the way. I don't like to wait for the service. Because you wait for the first, that's where it takes a longer process. And then you pay online, it takes them about eight days to clear the payment. And that's another thing I don't like. That's why I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do a money order because I can go pay it on that last second of the month and it could be cleared by the first of the month if it falls on a weekday. Possibly, maybe not so. But it, I just know it's already paid for and it's out of my possession. Right. I get it. Well, let's give you an adjournment. Where are the, the date? Court's available April 23rd at 930. Okay, 423. At 9.30 a.m. will be our next court date. Hopefully you guys can get it resolved by then because it's awfully strange what happened to the money orders. Yeah, I think that being for February to be on there and not March, and I paid March in money order as well, it's clear. Right. You can easily stop payments on bank checks, and that's why I just don't like the money. I mean, they work. But if anything goes wrong, and then my goodness. initial reason for coming here because I was told it was a payment that was for December that wasn't paid, so that was my initial reason. But then I that's was told, we saw. right, that was on the summons, and then I was telling, Oh, well, it's late fees that's going on, and I'm like, Okay, I've been paying on money orders. How are late fees on money orders? And I paid them before the first. I was what I paid in April, well, you and know what, you know what you maybe should do. Just for future references, if you do use the money order, have somebody give you a receipt saying they received the money. That way, you need to give me a copy of the printer. And you know, I see the showing that their signature as the representative of your landlord, leasing agent, whoever it is. And you so, would think they would automatically do that. Saying, I, no, you should automatically yeah. ask for it. I mean, so that there's no question. Because now we don't know what happened to exactly. it. You know, now they can say, well, she never gave it to us. And you're like, yes, I did. Right. But we don't have anything that shows they got gave you a receipt. So you just get February. a receipt for it next time. It's March and you got April. How you miss a month? It's, it's, it's a month and month that's missing from two different occasions. So that's the confusing part about this. All right. Well, we're going to figure it out. And Mr. Borkin will get on it. So, did you have anything else? 
No, you're good for now. I'm good for now. All right. You're so, a man for an additional concern on the record. Sure. And I did spend some time yelling at each other in the hallway. Yelling? I, I would not say, I'd say elevated voices. He's usually um, pretty quiet from what I know. I don't know him that well, but I see him in here. So you, um, you must got him going. I, it, was a, it, was a, it was a, like I said to him, and I will say again, I do apologize. It's a frustration that's going on for months. Months. I, I wanted to make to sure the defendant that. didn't feel threatened and would enter into an agreement willingly if, if we decided to get to that point and um, if there wasn't any um, bad blood. Because I did person. mention that comment, too. Oh. I don't think I'm going to have a comment. Well, yeah. she can do whatever she thinks oh, she needs to do. But he just want he just wants to make sure that you don't feel pressured or threatened by the situation with talking to him if you do enter into this uh, agreement down the road. Mm -hmm. That's what he's trying to make sure. Right. But we'll, we'll, we'll resolve it when we get there. Okay. So we'll come back and see what we do on the twenty third at nine thirty a.m. Right. Well, did you want to give her a notice now? Or? Yeah. Okay.